Hello there. We are the Gargarians. Our planet Gargaria is in great danger and will explode soon. We need to build ourselves a new home before our planet is destroyed. We found out that Earth is a habitable planet with different systems, and is the home of billions of different living things. We need your help to gather more data on Earth and its systems, to be able to build ourselves a new planet that functions like Earth. Can you help us find out more about how Earth's systems work and interact with each other? So, you decided to join us. Thank you. Before we begin, I want to tell you the things we have found out so far. Earth has four systems, hydrosphere, atmosphere, geosphere, and biosphere. We are in the sky right now, which is a part of the atmosphere. The atmosphere includes all of the gases surrounding the Earth. Next is hydrosphere. Hydrosphere includes all the water on Earth in liquid, solid, and gas forms. Water can be found in gas form in the atmosphere, as well as on the ground in oceans, rivers, lakes, glaciers, and groundwater. The geosphere includes the rocks and minerals on Earth. This also includes the layers of the Earth, crust, mantle, and outer and inner cores. And finally, the biosphere. The biosphere includes all of the living organisms on Earth. Humans, animals, insects, and plants are parts of the biosphere. Here we are in the sky to find out more about the atmosphere. Let's collect the gases in the atmosphere to learn more about them. Stay on the collectible elements for a short time to collect them and view the gathered data from them. Avoid hitting the birds and rocks, and getting sucked into the cyclones on your way down. Hitting them, will cause you to move back to the last checkpoint. Have fun! This is nitrogen. Nitrogen is a colorless and odorless gas. Nitrogen is the most common gas in the atmosphere and makes up 78% of it. This is oxygen. Oxygen makes up 21% of the gases in the atmosphere. It is the gas that humans and most land animals need to breathe to survive. Trees and some of the sea plants produce oxygen. There are many other gases in the atmosphere. Overall, they make up around 1% of the gases in the atmosphere. One of these gases is argon. This is carbon dioxide. It is a very rare gas in the atmosphere, but humans and land animals produce CO2 when they breathe out. Burning wood and oil produces CO2 as well. Look at this. This is water vapor. This is water in gas form. This gas is also a part of the hydrosphere that is found in the atmosphere. The water that vaporizes from the surface of the oceans rises up to the atmosphere. Let's see what happens to the water vapor in the atmosphere. Wow! When the water vapor rises up, it becomes colder and condenses to form clouds. So, clouds are made of water which makes them also a part of the hydrosphere. Winds and clouds in the atmosphere interact with mountains to determine the patterns of the weather. Let's see how.
Nice. We found out one of the reasons for raining. Clouds in the atmosphere are guided to the mountains by wind. They interact with the mountains and cause rain or snow. Rain is essential to the living things in the biosphere. Now that we know how it rains, select the elements that belong to the biosphere, so that we know which of these are parts of the biosphere that need water to survive. Awesome! Now we know one of the ways that the elements in the biosphere interact with hydrosphere. Now we just need to send some data back to Gargaria. Answer these questions to send the answers back to Gargaria and help them build us a new home. Awesome. Now we just need to answer some questions that Gargarians have about Earth to build a new planet. Hello again buddy. Here we want to learn about weather and climate on Earth. Do you remember what we learned about the atmosphere, right? Weather is the conditions of the atmosphere at a particular time and place. The weather is now clear here but it might be different in other places. The weather here can change too. Let's find more about different weathers. The weather is windy here. Winds are produced as a result of gases moving from high-pressure areas to low-pressure areas. Warm light air rises from warm lands, and cool heavy air falls in cool lands or water. The bigger the difference between the pressures, the faster the air will move from the high to the low pressure. That rush of air causes wind. The weather has become rainy. We already found out what causes rainy weather. Water vapor turns into clouds when it cools and condenses. How beautiful is Earth? I can't wait to have a home like Earth. Look at this. This is so cool. This weather is called snow. Just like rain, snow is also a result of water vapor cooling down. Snow forms when the atmospheric temperature is at or below freezing, 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The weather always seems to be cold in this place. On Earth they call it climate. Climate describes the typical weather conditions in an area over a long period of time. This is a polar climate. Now select the living things of this climate to learn more about them. Now let's answer the questions Gargarians are asking, and send the data back to Gargaria. Hi! Welcome back! It is time to learn about the Hydrosphere now. We already know many things about the Hydrosphere, but it is time to take a closer look. The hydrosphere contains all the water on Earth and all forms of liquid, solid, and gas. 
The largest form of water on Earth are the oceans. Oceans hold many mysteries. Let's jump into one of the oceans and find out more about them. Let's interact with the elements in the ocean and extract more information. The bottom of the seas are full of rocks and sand. These rocks are also part of the geosphere. They are brought to the oceans through the rivers by erosion. We will find more information about erosion soon. This is a seaweed. They are plants that live in the ocean. Just like plants on land, they are a part of biosphere as well. This is salt. Ocean's water is salty because there are many different soluble minerals in ocean's water, and also when water passes rocks and landforms on its way to the ocean it picks up small amounts of salt and other dissolved minerals. This is a coast, where sea and land meet. The rocks are shaped this way as a result of the interaction between the stones and waves. This is a wave. Waves are made as a result of the interaction between the ocean and the wind. The water waves from the ocean can shape the coastal landforms. This is a beach. Here sea and land meet. This is another coastal landform with loose particles called sand. Sand shaped this wave as a result of water waves washing them to the shore. Look at this. It is a cute fish. The ocean is the home of many different sea creatures. Fishes are one of them. They live in the water and need water to survive just like land animals need oxygen. This is a crab. As you see, the ocean supports a variety of ecosystems and organisms. Fishes, crabs, seaweeds, sharks, octopuses, etc., all live in the ocean. Unlike fishes, crabs can live on both land and in water. Say hello to the water molecule again. The oceans are made of water. All the water you see is made of... Now that we have gathered enough information about what is inside the oceans, we must learn about the water cycle. The water cycle on Earth is crucial to the existence of all the life forms on Earth. The water cycle is the continuous movement of water throughout geosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. Now let's see how this cycle works. It all starts with the sun. The sun provides heat energy that causes the water cycle to flow on Earth. Now bring the sun closer to the ocean to see the flow start. As you can see, in the water cycle, heat energy from the sun causes water in the ocean to increase in temperature and evaporate into gas. Now, can you tell me which systems of the Earth are interacting with each other here? That's right. The water that falls from the clouds is called precipitation. Precipitation creates rivers which move the water back to the oceans. Now let's jump into the river and continue the water cycle. Water running down the mountain creates rivers. When rain falls on the land, it either seeps into the ground, or becomes runoff and creates rivers on its journey towards the seas. Now let's move down the river to find out more about it. Interact with the elements on your way to collect more information about them.
spaceship has been moving rocks and sediments down as it was moving down along the way. Water can move rocks and sediments too. This phenomenon is called erosion. Erosion is the process by which rocks, soil, and sediments are transported from one location to another by the water. This phenomenon is called weathering. Weathering is the process by which rocks, soil, and sediments are broken into smaller particles. As you saw, weather conditions such as rainfall can shape the landforms on Earth through weathering and erosion. And now that we are back in the ocean, we have completed the wonderful cycle of water. Water can flow between the ground, air, and organisms on Earth in many different pathways through the water cycle. Now let's answer the Gargarians' questions about the hydrosphere. Welcome to the final part of our journey. Here, we will learn about geosphere. The geosphere includes the crust, mantle, outer core, and inner core. The layer humans and animals live on is the crust. Now let's explore Earth's crust and find out more information about it. Mountains are a part of Earth's crust. Mountains are one of the main landforms on Earth. Most mountains are formed from Earth's layers smashing together. This is a rock. Earth's crust is full of rocks. This is a jungle. A jungle is land covered with dense forest and tangled vegetation, usually in tropical climates. Jungles are landforms with many different kinds of living things. This is sediment. Sediment is a naturally occurring material that is broken down by processes of weathering and erosion. A plain is a broad area of relatively flat land. Plains are one of the major landforms on Earth. They cover more than one-third of the world's land area. Plains exist on every continent. This is a cute little cow. Different landforms are home of different types of living beings. Say hello to soil. Soil is the loose surface material that covers most land. Soil covers most of Earth's crust, and is necessary for the growth of plants and trees. Some living things live underground in the soil. Deserts are vast areas covered with sand. These landforms are usually hot and dry due to the lack of rain. Deserts are one of the many landforms on the Earth's crust. This is a snake. Only special types of plants and animals that can survive heat can live in the deserts. 
Awesome. Now that we have all the information we need, we can move down to the Earth's mantle. So far we learned that Earth's crust contains rock, soil, sediment, mountains, and con- We also learned that the landforms in a region affect the types of the living things that can exist there. Now let's see what we can learn from Earth's mantle. This is Earth's mantle. The mantle is the largest and most massive layer of planet Earth. Earth's mantle is made of hot, soft, solid rock. Now we have enough information about the mantle. Let's dig further down into Earth's core. Wow! This is the outer core. Earth's outer core is a fluid layer, composed of mostly iron and nickel that lies above Earth's solid inner core and below its mantle. It's too hot to stay here. Let's hurry up. Finally, Earth's inner core. Earth's inner core is hot and mostly metallic. It is primarily a solid ball. It looks amazing. Now I believe we have all the information we need about Earth's geosphere. Let's answer the Gargarians' questions about this magnificent system of Earth. Thank you for guiding us in this journey. Thanks to you, Gargarians will be safe, and we will build ourselves a planet just like Earth to live on. Goodbye my friend.